Hey, what's going on everybody out there? I'm Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. So everybody has their own recollection of what it was like going through their high school years. Everybody has their own perspective and their own memories that they could recall during those years when you were going through high school all the way up to the point of graduation. I myself included, I remember going through high school back up in New York and upstate New York specifically and going through those four years of like growth evolution, you know, really coming into my own. And to be totally honest with you guys, it really freaking sucked. I mean, seriously, it was ass. I had so many bad memories from there, from people picking on me and kind of really calling me a loser just because I liked video games, by the way, never going on dates with me and all this other crazy nonsense and stuff. But either way, that's a story for another time. But I dare guarantee you guys that you don't have a recollection of high school in the same way that Dan and Gary Games presented in this game that we're actually going to talk about today. Let's talk about Super Daryl Deluxe for the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch. Super Daryl Deluxe is a Metroidvania-style platformer that has you taking the role of a new student to Waterfalls High School named Daryl. However, unlike other normal high schools around, Waterfalls High has a ton of weird and wacky stuff going on. You have a giant bear as a classmate, a robotic-like assistant principal, and classrooms that feel like super-exaggerated versions of their subject matter. The game begins in media's res of events that take place later in the story, right before thrusting you back to the very beginning where the game properly starts. Moving around waterfalls high is smooth and with solid controls, and the design of the levels are pretty interesting. Now, one of the things that I really love about Super Daryl Deluxe is its visual style. I love the kind of, you know, black and white and kind of like toony take on like an over-exaggeration on the characters, the backgrounds, the subject matters, which are kind of like, you know, based on the different class subjects that you get back in high school or just school in general. I think that's really fun in the way that they present that and really kind of take, you know, a lot of liberties with how it's presented and how it's actually, you know, plays out over the course of the story. I really think that's pretty damn cool. One of the things I also thought was funny is that there's a lot of different nuanced kind of like, you know, nods and, you know, fourth wall breaking jokes about gaming culture, about pop culture, about nerd culture, and a whole bunch of other stuff that seems like it was not only pulled from the 1970s and the 1980s, but even now in the modern day age of gaming. For me, this is something I think is very fun because it kind of breaks up the monotony and breaks up the seriousness of some of the subject matter, especially towards the later half of the game. You're always going to get a chuckle here and there from different, you know, characters and different types of gameplay elements or just areas that you visit in the various corners of Waterfall High School. But besides that, there's a couple other things I want to touch on that I feel like should be mentioned about this game. Navigating through Waterfalls High can be somewhat of a chore, despite how good it all looks on screen. The map you eventually get doesn't have the same one-to-one -one feel you get from similar games like Castlevania Symphony of the Night or Super Metroid. You won't always know your exact position on the map, and you'll have to move around and look for key points on there. You could get upgrades to mark off more important things like secrets and stuff, but this is more open to you later in the game, which could be a bummer for some. I really wish that some of the descriptions and some of the dialogue was a little bit less vague, you know, giving you better details and better ideas of where you have to go. I know they try to kind of like blend it a little bit where it's more smooth and it's kind of like a little bit more in the same way that the different characters are having a conversation. And they do leave kind of like, you know, certain hits in like different red text and other different types of colors to really emphasize of like certain important stuff that you need to pay attention to. However, I still feel like for the majority of the time, I was really just exploring my areas just because I was genuinely confused of where I needed to go or what exactly I needed to interact with. The other thing that I really don't like, which is just seems to be a problem just specifically with this game, is that you don't get a map at the very start of it. You know, you have to play a little bit, you know, from the main story in order to kind of talk to certain characters and then you get a map of the high school as well as some of the other areas that you visit later on in the game. Now let's talk about some of the battling and the combat and the stuff that I feel like really distinguishes this game in comparison to some of the other games of the genre that it's part of. The combat is what makes Super Daryl Deluxe different than other Metroidvania styled games. You have a customizable palette of attacks and abilities that allow you to destroy enemies that block your path, all of which can be upgraded and improved upon as you progress by completing main and side quests as well as also defeating enemies. This is great because even though you don't have one main attack to use the entire time, you could change up your style and strategy whenever you need to. It's pretty cool to have many options open to you when you have a boss fight or a very tough area coming up and the breathing room to decide how to deal with it. Some of the attacks can get very powerful and look very spectacular, as well as also deal with enemies super fast, but it does take a significant amount of time to obtain them. 
The only other thing that I really can complain about with Super Daryl Deluxe is some of the difficulty spikes. I feel like in certain areas, you're clearly kind of just exploring around and you're not supposed to be in that specific spot, especially in relation to the story, as well as also some of the other areas that the game wants you to go visit. But in order to kind of really discover that, you kind of just accidentally walk into certain areas and you just get completely wrecked by some of the enemies that are way overpowered compared to you. You can deal with this by doing a little bit of grinding in some of the previous areas that you might have visited and killing some of the enemies and getting better, you know, different abilities and different attacks and stuff and leveling them up along the way. However, I found myself more often than not just running into areas that I wasn't supposed to be in and just getting completely killed and then having to go back to my previous save. The other thing that I think also I should mention too is that if you're not saving frequently and you end up dying in a certain area, you go back all the way to your previous save rather than the previous room that you might have entered from. I feel like in this style of game and this genre, that's a little bit much more welcome than going back to the previous saves. We've had other games like Symphony of the Night and even Metroid to an extent do that same type of thing, but much more later iterations of those games brought you back to the previous rooms rather than the previous save. I felt like this would be a little bit much more better for the player and especially for someone like me especially if I'm doing things over a longer period of time, I shouldn't feel like I have to be punished just because I might have forgotten just the save here and there. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a bunch of different save points scattered throughout the entirety of all the levels and all the different areas that you end up visiting here and there. However, every once in a while, you might be thinking about something else, you might be thinking about certain things that are coming up, or even just distracted by something else, and you will probably forget to save. So for some people, that might not be too much of a nitpick, but it's something that I feel like is worth mentioning. And there you have it. That's my thoughts on Super Dario Deluxe, both for the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch. I reviewed this game on the PlayStation 4, but it is available on the Nintendo Switch, and I got a chance to play it at PAX East 2018. If you guys want to check out some of my thoughts on PAX East 2018, including Super Dario Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch, check out the description box below. I have an actual link to my previous vlog where I talked about my experience over in Boston and kind of exploring the PAX East floor. And big shout outs to Dan and Gary Games for allowing me to review this game for you guys. I also have a written review over on thecoalition.com. There'll be links in the description box as well. And then finally, I just have to mention to you guys again, I am on Patreon. If you guys can, please support my Patreon. Please support my content. I have a bunch of exclusives over there for you guys to enjoy. I have a lot more content coming very soon, including some special giveaways that are not only going to be here for the YouTube channel, but also some special stuff exclusive to Patreon supporters over there. So if you guys can, spread word about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video review. I got more coming very, very soon. I'm also going to be doing some other special stuff that you guys will be hearing about on my social media. If you can, please check out some of the other links I have in the description box below, including my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I know that you guys are really going to enjoy. And also, let me not forget to give a special shout out to Jasmine Russell, who is supporting me on Patreon at the Beast Tier level. You get a special shout out here on my vlog, again, for the entirety of the month for supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. It's people like you that allow me to do even bigger and better things and even more cooler content for everybody here on YouTube and also on the Patreon page. I will talk to you guys again very soon. Peace out. Stay epic, everybody. Thanks a ton for watching this video review, everybody. I really appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving me. If you guys want to see more video reviews just like this one, make sure you guys check out my Doom 2016 video review that's on the channel now. And if you want more great videos, be sure to check out my vlog about PAX East 2018. I had a blast up there and I got to play a whole bunch of cool games and a bunch of swag that I get to show all of you. With that being said, I will talk to all of you again real soon. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Peace out and stay epic, everybody.